Hello there. Eric Francis here with you on the occasion of the Aries equinox, that is to say Northern Hemisphere spring equinox and the full moon and a lot of other things going on in the planets. Today seemed like a good day to uh, drop in on you. So greetings, hello, and <clears throat> nice to be back with you. So um, as mentioned, today is um, the equinox, the uh, no Northern Hemisphere spring equinox, but it's the equinox all over the planet where night and day are approximately equal for a few days, and that also means that the sun enters Aries. And what is going on now is similar to a number of other times when things really concentrate and, uh, you know, push the energy to a pretty high pitch. But what we've got happening now is pretty unusual. And I'm going to take a few minutes and kind of show you what that is about. Uh, forgive me if I go over my requisite 12 minutes for an online video. I was never much for the rules, but I, I do want to um, make sure that I um, make the point to you uh, with enough information to actually give you something. So uh, just just having a, um, a, a full moon on the equinox is itself a, a pretty, you know, exciting thing. It, it's uh, <clears throat> unusual for that to happen, particularly as close as the as the two are uh, are happening. Uh, the the sun enters Aries today at 458 and then at uh, at, at 942, less than five hours later, the, the moon enters Libra and makes an exact opposition to the sun. And that is the full moon. And uh, and and so that is um, a thing that is going to trigger what's called the Aries point. The Aries point is the first degree of Aries. It is also called the sidereal vernal point or SVP. It's the point where the uh, the tropical zodiac is reckoned against the sidereal zodiac that's used over in India, Sri Lanka, and places like that. So uh, the, the Aries point has a lot of different uses, and one, one of them here in, in Western astrology, especially in uh, on planet waves, is that it represents a, a crossroads, an intersection between individual experience and collective experience. And th this is a very important theme right now because so much of what we're experiencing in so many different ways, uh, you know, makes that crossroads between what is personal and private and what is collective and public and, and political. I used to say um, that the the personal is political. Um, I, I, I no longer like that as a as a key phrase. Um, I, I would I would edit that in 2019 to the personal is exploited politically. How about that? How, how's that for a new way to say it? And then I would say that the political becomes very personal. So uh, the political realm is used as a kind of a cudgel or weapon against people. And, and it's used uh, often to uh, pry into our private lives. We're also in a time when, um, due to a lot of activity in areas that I have uh, I've described copiously over the years, past four or five years, um, with the help of uh, the McLuhan family, got my charts here, I'm gonna get to that in a second, um, is, um, is, is that this thing here that we're in, electronic media, has a way of uh, turning I'm squinting at the the brightness of the the light coming off the screen, but I'll, I'll try to ignore that. Um, that th th this environment that I'm in right now uh, ha has a way the digital environment overall, the internet, and uh, that that includes all all modes of digital, but also electrical media, radio, um, and uh, and and other things has a way of turning people inside out. It um, it it energetically eviscerates the whole concept of pri privacy, and this is, I mean, for, for one thing, I'm I don't have a TV studio, so I'm broadcasting to you from uh, from my office. Wonder if I can just get that to stop down. I still have not figured out in this particular place I'm recording. Um, I have not figured out what to do about the super bright light that washes out the image, except to have a thing in my hands to reflect it back at the monitor. Anyway. And then the f-stop goes uh, goes uh, goes down. All right, so um, I'm I'm 
broadcasting from my office, whatever you want to call it, webcasting, and you you see the environment that I live within. And that's just one small example of how um, the, these media turn our lives inside up, which we've seen this over and over again. Another example is data breaches, right? All the data is piled up on, on these computers, and then um, one hacking team hacks it, and then suddenly like a billion... Uh, a, a billion MasterCard account numbers with passwords, social security numbers, and, and the whole bit um, is is um, made available on the on the dark web. I mean, it's completely ridiculous, and we have forgotten the concept of, of privacy, of interior space, and and of the individual self. Part of what I'm doing in the work that I do is to remind you of your interior space and your your private being, and the, the need to honor. Uh, your your inner life. All right, so go. Okay, so uh, let's let's take a look at what we've got going on right now, and uh, why why it's so unusual. So uh, first of all, the the sun is entering Aries in a few hours from the, my recording here on Wednesday afternoon. So there's Aries. There's the sun. Maybe there's something I can point with that's a little bit better. There's Aries. There's the sun. And what happens right away when, when the sun gets into Aries is that it makes an exact conjunction to Chiron. That's a slow moving point. Chiron's going to spend eight years more in Aries. Takes, Chiron takes uh, 51 years to go all the way around, 50.4 or something years to go around half a century. And uh, Chiron is conjunct Salacia. Salacia takes about 300 years to go around. It's a slow moving point. And in um, my assessment of the, the, the time in history that um, we're in, time of day that we're in, where we need to do this, uh, is, is that salacia is about the need to mature sexually. So we, we want sex, we, 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 want, um, we, we want a safe environment for sex, whatever that means exactly. Um, the culture seems to want to uh, turn uh, all, all forms of sex into ads. So the other thing is we've got sex coming at us left, right, and center from advertising. It seems like there's no ad that's not in some way selling sex, which means selling young women. Every time you see a young woman in an ad, you can assume they're selling sex, plain and simple. It really, you don't need to really think much further. That's the point of, of putting um, attractive young women into ads. And um, th this maturity issue to me is described by Salacia, which since it entered Aries about a year, year and a half ago, has come with all of this salaciousness around sex. So uh, it's, it's um, uh, occasionally uh, a, a cosmic body, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> will um, uh, mirror the theme exactly, and Salacia is doing that right now. So what we, we've got now is this um, enhanced concept that anything involving sex has to be salacious. It has to be racy and gossipy and a little bit g gross. And Chiron tends to precipitate healing crisis. Chiron conjunct Salacia, which will be exact. Chiron conjunct Salacia. There's no symbol for Salacia, so I just wrote Sal. It's not really Sal, it's Salacia. Um, will we'll be in full force all through 2019, well into 2020, and Salacia is going to continue to be a prominent factor for many years because of activity going on in Capricorn. So the first thing that uh, the sun does is it arrives in Aries, and then it makes a conjunction to Chiron and a conjunction to Salacia. But while it's doing that, it's also making a square to two points in Capricorn, all in very early Capricorn, also activating the Aries point because squares squares activate the Aries point. So we've got Sun conjunct Chiron, square Salacia, square Pholus, which unleashes energy, and also square Quayar, which is about family material. And so uh, one of the, the things that's not being talked about amidst all of this salacious sex talk is how much of what, whatever it is that we have, the good, the bad, and the ugly, comes from our early um, ch childhood environment, and that that's where the, the patterning takes place, and that's where most, uh, most things begin and from which they continue. So we're going to get a, a, a kind of a double burst here. Chiron 
Sun, Chiron, Salacia, uh, you know, kind of initiating healing crisis around uh, around sexuality and salaciousness, and then Sun, Folus, uh, Quayar, which is the square is a lot of mojo that wants to be expressed. Anytime you see a square aspect, you think what needs to be expressed, what needs to be said, what needs to happen. While this is going on, uh, there is this point here in very early Libra at one and a half degrees called M87. That's a galaxy, it doesn't go very far, it processes, it doesn't orbit. So it's just there all the time. And that is a power source that I think is part of why the Aries point is itself such a power source right now, because M87 is sitting right there in early Libra. And tonight, the, the moon opposes the sun conjunct M87, and the moon also makes a square to Pholus and to Quayar. Down here in Cancer, the fourth leg of the square, our two uh, points are not very well known. One is an asteroid called Hebe, right in early Cancer. Hebe is about codependency um, and uh, the, the, the drama triangle, and so we get a lot of um, dramas around Hebe. And then uh, this point is called Hades. It's one of those planets without a body, uh, for better for another discussion, but Haiti is about depth. It's about mining. It's it's about bringing things out from deep underneath, but, and and so uh, it, it's in the it's in the setup and it's there, kind of just uh, waiting to uh, dr dredge things up, wait, waiting for you know. And we we see a lot of this dredging up happening, and we're not really questioning it. Um, we, you know, we think that, for example, it's all about men, or um, it's it's all about bad people, um, but, but there are th things in every single person's background that have no business in the public sphere, uh, and, and that could be uh, brought up and be damaging to someone. It's uh, uh, for, very easy to get someone fired, anyone. You can pretty much pick anyone in the world you want, unless it's, uh, you know, uh, a rock star or something like that, and, uh, and you know, just an ordinary working person. And, and mess their life up. And so uh, we, we may see a bit more of that under this astrology, but I think we're also uh, reaching the point where this, uh, this, this bullshit has to burn out and where we need a more serious conversation about sexuality that begins with actually being informed and educated about sexuality. Uh, as far as I know, most people have not read a single book about sexuality. I don't mean a, uh, a romance book that in some way portrays sex, but I mean a, a book that, that presents a serious conversation of how people feel, what they want, what to do. And we all know that, they're, they're, that, that we need sexual healing, but there's not uh, a widely available concept of sexual healing, nor do we know who to go to for sexual healing. And I'll tell you that a lot of therapists are afraid to talk about it uh, because they're uh, they're afraid of being accused of something by bringing up the subject. Uh, my own teacher, Joe Trusso, uh, uh, routinely, when when the subject uh, gets near that point, asks women to describe their first experience of menstruation, and he gets a lot of interesting responses. Although, if you're female, your experience, your first experience of menstruation, is a a, a very uh, important turning point in your life that it would help you to be able to discuss in a, in a straightforward manner how you felt, what your mother said, what your father said, uh, what was it like Carrie in the, in the, in the Stephen King book, uh, what, what exactly happened and how did that um, set the tone of, um, of your later life. So anyway, we've got a lot to express here, Grand Cross going on. And then, uh, by the way, the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto forming uh, they're now within about two and a half degrees, and uh, this is going to be brewing until it is exact on January 12th, 2020. All right, one last uh, brief point here that uh, I will have more to say about in my in my next um, in my next video. But uh, while this is all going on, while uh, while this um, massive fireworks display of this Grand Cross activated by a full moon, this is crazy. If you have any astrology training at all. You know what I'm talking about. And, uh, you might just get a little to get that, but here we are. I have it. While that's all going on, Mercury is in the process of stationing direct. Now that today is the 20th. This happens on the 
It's the 20th. It happens on the 28th. That's eight days, more than a week from now. But the station direct is between Mercury and Neptune. It's going to happen in an exact conjunction to Neptune. The reason you can see it's an exact conjunction is they both have the number 16. So Mercury is stationing direct at 1606 with Neptune sitting at 1658. And that's a conjunction. It's a conjunction of under one degree, 52 arc minutes. That's a really unusual thing. I have never seen anything even vaguely like this. And when Mercury stations, it tends to hover around a point in the zodiac for a few weeks, which it's doing. And, and, the, and the, at that point in the zodiac happens to be Neptune. So uh, Mercury Neptune conjunctions can have a, or all contacts, but especially conjunction, conjunctions, can have a visionary quality. Uh, but they can also have an issue of truthiness. They can have a little problem of, uh, of, of needing validation and verification. There has to be some checking of, of um, checking, uh, excuse me, hiccuping of whatever it is, what you say, what someone else says, um, you know, and, and the, uh, the Mercury retrograde uh, rules of don't sign, don't buy, don't commit, don't sign contracts, I would, uh, I would amplify them tenfold right now. Even though I take those kind of mellow and just suggest people avoid things, uh, this, this, is a, um, this is one really to take a step back and, and uh, pause before you make any firm, uh, firm commitments. Anything else going on in here? No, that's about it. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it a day. Uh, don't uh, forget to tune in to planetwaves.fm. I've given a much longer version of, um, of these aspects. Again, planetwaves.fm. That's a Pacifica Radio Network affiliated internet radio station. And then also intelligence.pw. That's where a lot of action is going on right now and where you can find the monthly horoscopes, intelligence.pw. PW. All right. Thank you for listening. I'll see you in some other version of the internet or some other corner of the Planet Waves Kingdom. Reporting in from high above Wall Street down there uh, in, in beautiful, friendly Kingston, New York. I'm Eric Francis. And bye for now. Click.